Hello friend, Jim here with JB's Big Adventure coming to you from Lake Chapala, Mexico. In today's video, this is one of those things, subjects I get asked about a lot. And that is one of the most important things when you live day to day, every day, something we all do all day long and are on the internet. I don't remember exactly how long it was. Um, I saw a survey done, uh, a statistic that was given, and I want to say that it was about three weeks ago or so. And I was amazed at the number of hours a day that the average person spends on the internet. It, it isn't two hours. It's not four hours. It's six and a half hours a day. Now, it might have grown since then, since three weeks ago, but it's an important subject. I'm going to share with you how to make sure that you've got the fastest internet possible and your experience here at Lake Chapala can be a great one. Before I get to that, if you haven't already, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's a great community, and I know that you'll want to be a part of it. All you got to do is go to the bottom right-hand corner, tap on the box, the red box, and you'll be subscribed. You'll know when our next video comes out. Also, give us a thumbs up. That lets other people know it's a great video to watch on moving to Lake Chapala. So, what I'm going to share with you here is one of those things that I get asked about a lot. Now, I'm not only going to show you how to ensure and make sure you've got the fastest internet possible, I'm going to walk you through a couple steps that if you find a place that you like and you're no longer at Lake Chapala, you've already you know gone back after you visited here at Lake Chapala, you found a place that you liked, I'm going to show you how you can know what the internet speed is at wherever it is that you're wanting to move to. I'm going to go through that with you. So in doing that, you're taking a look here at some slides that I put together. And these slides are how to find out what the internet speed is of where it is that you're looking to move to in Lake Chapala. Now, I will share this with you. Before Barbara and I moved from our last spot that we had been at for a year, uh, we had great internet. I want to say we had 50 or 60 uh, MPS. Uh, uh, I, I want to say that's about what it was. Um, and that was, you can get that for like um, 400, so about $20. You can get 50 megs. We actually got 200. And I'm going to share with you how we did that. But uh, here on this screen, what you can see is how to ensure fast internet speed here in Mexico. So what you're going to do, step one, is you're going to go to speed, speedtest.net. Now, it can be you that goes to that site, or at, at, if you're here looking at properties and you're inside of, if you're inside of a property that's already going to offer you free internet service, you'll be able to know by doing this how fast it is. Speedtest.net, that's the first step. Once you're there, you're going to see the screen that pops up in step number two. Here is what's important. Make sure that you know what the name of the network is on the left-hand side where that yellow arrow is pointing to. That is called Telmex. Now, Telmex is like the largest phone company here, dealing with uh, internet, dealing with phone services. Some people don't have cell phones here because of how poor the country is. So um, that is the provider that is here at Lake Chapala, Telmex. But there's some others. There's Wiz. Um, there's one that's called um, Total Play that we were told was the fastest. Well, we've got 200. And it just so happens that Telemex has a optic fiber that you can actually get faster speeds. But I'm going to go through that here in just a moment. So you'll go to speedtest.net. Step number two, you'll make sure you're on the right network. Step number three, you're going to tap on that go. 
Now, what's going to happen, it is now going to read how fast your internet speed is coming in on the download. Downloading means you're going to the internet and you're downloading something to take a look at or information or whatever it may be. That is how fast it will download. So, as you see here, it's 201.21 Mbps, millibytes per second, megabytes per second, I think is actually what it is. And uh, our upload, which means if I'm taking a document or my YouTube videos and I'm uploading them, that is actually at 88.11. Now, today I checked it again and I'm actually like at 120 today for upload. So those are the four things that you'll want to check on to see exactly what speed you are at presently. Now, if you are not here at Lake Chapala, but you saw something online that you liked and you've been in contact with the, uh, the rental agent and that rental agent told you that it's got free internet service, they can actually go inside that unit. They can pull up speedtest.net. They can make sure they're on the right network. They go ahead and tap the circle where it says go, and they can actually do the exact same thing and then take the screenshot of the speed at what it is there. Now, those speeds vary all over the place, all over the place here. I've been told by folks that it's real difficult for them to get internet. I've had people tell me it goes in and out. Um, I mean, we we haven't really had any challenges with ours except when we when we first were moving, we went to Telmax because somebody else has had the account already. So all we did was we transferred it and uh, we increased the amount of or the speed of the internet that we wanted. And all we're getting is just internet itself, no phone, no other services. So that is the way that you are able to tell how fast the speed is and know if, in fact, if you need to increase the speed or is it going to be okay right where you're at and uh, it'll be enough for you to be surfing. Because you can do this also wherever you live, whether in the States or wherever in the world, you can do this test and it'll tell you what your speed is. And you'll know as, you, as you're as you surfing the internet and all, how fast it needs to be and is, is it fast enough for what you presently do. And so that would be the test. And this would be the test here. And that would make it very, very easy for you to be able to understand the speed. Now, in this slide, I'm sharing with you how to test your internet strength and speed. Well, we already did that. So, and, and you could tell it was very simple, only four steps. Now, uh, for a period of two years, I, I want to say it was two years, maybe a little bit more than two years, I worked for Canon. Canon's the company that makes the cameras, and they do a lot of electronic stuff also. And I worked at a contact center for Canon that dealt with the tech side of things when it came to networks. So, you know, cameras can connect to the network. Um, you've also got printers that can connect to the network, all kinds of different wireless things. So this is something I dealt with every day. So just picture me at a contact center wearing, you know, a headset and a mic and everything. And you're calling and asking, how do you get the item you've got set up onto the network and how to make sure that you're at the fastest speed and all those kind of things. I'm going to walk you through that. And I'm going to make some things real clear so you'll be able to see it. That's why I'm including this. That way you can visually see it. So first, unplug your router for 30 seconds. Then plug it back in again. Now, this process is called a power cycle. And what it does is it clears your router's memory and gives it a fresh start on tasks that were bogging it down before. It could have been you just being on the internet and doing some things. And, you know, it's all electronics. So there are times where things really get held up. And I can't tell you how many people uh, that were customers that I told them that what they needed to do was power cycle their router. So, again, you would unplug the router after 30 seconds, plug it back in, uh, let the signal come back, and you would know exactly where you're at. You could do a test. 
just to see if it's faster or not. Okay, number two. It might be that you need to move your router to a better location. Now, this is really an important thing, and it's something that a lot of people do not think of. And what's really, I'm, I'm, I, if I remember here, I'm going to share with you a little story about when I, uh, well, I'll share it with you right now. So a lady calls in, and she's on her way to work. She was a nurse on her way to work, and we got talking. She called in. She's on the car on the way to work. And she wanted to know how she could connect her printer to her network. Now, folks, I will tell you, I was so surprised. She got upset on the phone with me because I couldn't connect her printer while she was in the car on the way to work. Isn't that a wild thing? And you probably thought that you heard it all. And I'll never forget, this person actually was from California, which is where I'm originally from. And that is the land of the fruits and the nuts. <laughs> so I, the experiences, or people call in and I said, okay, how do you have the item plugged in? Uh, how, oh, well, I haven't plugged it in yet. Hello? I mean, you got to plug it in for it to work. Anyway. That's what I dealt with all day long. So these things I'm sharing with you, I've uh, done a few times a day. So, so what you want to do is, as it says here, move your router to a better location. Wi-Fi can travel only so far, and its signal can get interrupted or blocked by walls, floors, ceilings, furniture, appliances, and basically any large physical object. Um, I mean, I've... The places I've seen people trying to get internet, you know, their their router is in the master bedroom, but they're trying to get internet in a 4,000 square foot house, and he's got his workshop in the garage. Um, I mean, there's the, the requirements that people would think could necessarily take place. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who call in and had a house that was 4,000 square feet had the router in an office and they could get the signal anywhere in the house. Um, it just all depends on different factors of your router. How old is your router? Router? Uh, do you have fiber optic in the area? It's going to be faster. There's going to be questions that you would need to know about. But if you, I mean, if, you, if, if you've got the router in the basement and you're up on the second floor, there's a good chance you will not get a network connection. There's too much in between. So, Picture it somewhat like if you took a piece of string and you held one end and somebody else took the other end and went down to wherever the router is at. How straight of a line is that? Now, we're not taking a rubber ball and throwing it in a room and it's just going to bounce all over the place and get where you need it to go. No. Um, and it does not go as a crow flies because there could be things that get caught in the center. There are things that can block it. I mean, it can be interrupted by radio waves from other devices. Cordless phones will interrupt, baby monitors, microwaves, Bluetooth speakers. There's all kinds of things that can happen because it's technology. So that might be a fix for you. If that doesn't work, the third is switch your Wi-Fi frequency band from 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. Now, I put on here something that's important. That way you can get an idea what it is. Frequency bands are ranges of radio waves, frequencies, measured in GHZ, gigahertz, used to transmit data wirelessly and can be further be broken down into Wi-Fi channels. So basically, the higher the frequency number, the faster the data transmission. So a 5 gigahertz band is faster than a 2.4. Now, you might have a laptop that you've got plugged into your internet source and you find it's really slow. Well, you've tried to get five, but you come to find out that your laptop doesn't have the ability of getting five gigahertz. Older laptops don't always are not able, always able to read the faster speeds. It's called a dual band. Routers. There are routers nowadays, for the most part, um, 
are come with dual bands, but they weren't always that way. So you've got to know which band that you're on. So if you've got 2.4 and a choice of 5 gigahertz, go with the 5. It will be a lot faster for you, and you will definitely notice the difference. If you've only got 2.4, the next thing I'm going to share with you is this. Number four is adjust your router's antennas. Now, most routers nowadays have internal antennas, meaning they're mounted on the inside of the device, and you can't adjust them. Now, if your router has basically rabbit ears or has antennas, you can actually move them around to see if you can get a better signal or place it in a different position in your home office or the bedroom or wherever you've got your router sitting. Um, if it's got antennas, you want to make sure that you are going towards where the signal needs to be going to. So that's number four. Number five, an extender. Now, I've actually seen extenders used more on Mac than I have on PC for some reason. Now, an extender, what it does is it boosts, basically it takes the signal and boosts it from your router through the dead zone and it amplifies it or redistributes the existing Wi-Fi signal into the new existing area, an extended area. So let's say, for example, that you've got you've got a three bedroom house and you're at one end of the house where the router is at and your laptop's at the other end of the house. Well, depending on how far that is and how many walls it's going through, you might need to use an extender. Extenders can be somewhat like repeaters when it comes to radio frequencies. So what this does is allows you to get a better signal but you're still farther away. That might be a fix for you. Now, I've shared with you five different scenarios. The last scenario, which I leave for last, is because it isn't wireless. So the sixth would be to connect your router using an Ethernet cable. So it goes directly from your router directly into your computer. That is the way of getting the signal in that regards. When it comes to directly from the router, going directly into your computer, whatever signal you're getting, it will be at full strength once you set it up that way. Because you're no longer, you are no longer wireless. You are wired into, so what can happen is it, it redistributes the Wi-Fi signal um, as an extension of your router, plug it directly into your laptop. So it could be for, you know, wireless TV, any of these kind of things. You can plug your, you know, router and take the other end and put it into your laptop or whatever it is that you're trying to use. It can even be a printer. Um, if you're trying to use a printer that normally you, you set up wirelessly, you might have, you might have to set the printer up with a wired cable going from your wireless printer, which is now wired into your computer. So those are six things that you can actually do that will help you get better internet connection. Well, I hope that that has been helpful for you. I hope that the information there allows you to understand a little bit more about how to get your computer to work better and a better experience when you're on the internet and it doesn't drop out and you've got a really, really good signal uh, to your device that you're on wirelessly. So I hope this has been helpful. If you haven't already, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's real fast, easy to do. Little red box on the bottom of the right hand corner of the screen. Tap on it, you're subscribed, and you'll know when our next video comes out. Also, give us a thumbs up. That lets other people know it's a great video to watch about Lake Chapala. Also, what you can do is you can stop by, say hi, leave us a question, or even let us know of a video you'd like to see. And also, go ahead and hit the bell because that way you'll be immediately notified the next time that a video comes out. And I know you don't want to miss our next video. So with that, thank you for being a part of our channel. Thank you for being a part of this video. Have an awesome day. We'll see you 
on the next video.